Venezuela's top court has frozen the bank accounts of the country's opposition leader and self-declared interim president, Juan Guaido, and also barred him from leaving the country. This follows an order by Venezuela's attorney general to launch an investigation into Guaido. The U.S. and several other nations have recognized the 35-year-old as Venezuela's legitimate head of state after he launched a challenge to incumbent leader Nicolas Maduro last week. Well, on Tuesday, Washington also handed control of Venezuela's U.S. bank accounts over to Juan Guaido. The opposition leader has shrugged off the legal maneuvers being launched at home against him. Let's listen in. I'm not underestimating the threat of jail, and I don't want it to be understood like that. Very responsibly, I say there is nothing new coming from a regime that doesn't answer to the Venezuelan people's needs. Their only response is repression and persecution. Juan Guaido speaking there. Well, let's now go to Jennifer Camino Gonzalez from DW's Latin American service. Uh, Jennifer Maduro is clearly putting the squeeze on Juan Guaido. He's facing a criminal investigation now. His assets are seized and he can't leave the country. Is it just a matter of time now before Guaido is arrested? Well, let's face it, he should have been arrested already. The government usually moves very quickly on these on these opposition figures. Don't forget Leopoldo Lopez. He was leading protests in 2014, and in, shortly at the tail end of those protests, he was arrested, and he's still in, in custody. He's at, in, on their home arrest. So the question is, why isn't he arrested? Why hasn't he been arrested yet? And the, the answer is the United States. The U.S. has said that if Guaido is arrested, that they will take harsher measures. And, and that is the problem, that the, the government is actually afraid of this. They're afraid that if they move in too harshly on Guaido, that it might invite more intervention from the United States. And so they're, they're applying some pressure, but then also holding back. So speaking of holding back, uh, we've even heard that Maduro says he's ready for talks with the opposition. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, this is what they always do. They, they, this is what he wants, ultimately. He does not want to call for new elections, and he doesn't want to leave power. But the third way for him, which he has done before with the opposition, every time that, that the opposition mobilizes people, he says, well, let's talk. And so he has the backing of Mexico and Uruguay for this, and now he thinks that this is the way to defuse the situation. But the opposition is not likely to take this deal because they know what happens when this occurs, that they go to the, to the negotiating table, the mobilization dies down, and then in the end, the government just continues to stay in power. Today's an important day in Venezuela. Juan Guaido has called for more demonstrations against Maduro's government today. What can we expect? Well, you can't expect people to go out on the streets. The opposition is mobilized, it is unified, it is firmly behind Guaido. But at the same time, the threat of violence is real. People are still scared of dying in the streets. People have already died since last week. And, and the government is not afraid to jail people, to, to apply force. So that could depress the turnout. But we should definitely at least expect uh, a mobilization today to happen. Now, looking at the, the bigger picture here, Guaido says he is Venezuela's legitimate interim president. He's been recognized by a number of other governments. But is there any indication that Maduro might be willing to relinquish power or call a fresh election? Well, Maduro will want to stay on as long as possible. He's going to do anything to, to hold on to his power. And so it is not likely that he will call for elections. But the thing is that this is the long game here. And, and the opposition is playing it. And, and they know that ultimately all that they need is for the stars to align, for, for one or two generals to, the, to deflect from the government. And that could come if there is a, a bad situation with the, with the money. Everything in, in Venezuela's government is about money, about the oil. And now that the U.S. has imposed sanctions on PDVSA, the state oil company, we have to wonder what will happen in the long term if this starts affecting the government and if, with the international pressure, the one or two generals say, you know what, I'm out, then that could make the difference. And then right there, the bet, the high risk that the opposition has done could pay off. A lot of risks indeed. Jennifer Camino Gonzalez from our Latin America desk, thank you so much.